let's talk about kind of volume. So um, there's you know a, a huge amount of volume that happens in the financial system period. So including cryptocurrencies and fiat currencies, there's an enormous amount of transactions that happen every day. Uh, you know, foreign exchange, commodities being purchased, stocks and bonds being purchased, uh, commercial products being purchased at a convenience store by a regular consumer. There are just a bewildering amount of transactions that happen every day. So um, how is crypto asset analysis different from analyzing other kinds of financial data? So as an example, in terms of the volume that we were just speaking about, um, my understanding is that there are only about 19 million Bitcoins in circulation and somewhere between 200,000 and 400,000 Bitcoin transactions per day. And Bitcoin is uh, the most popular cryptocurrency as far as I'm aware. So that's, so yeah, so like that, that kind of scale, it seems to be dwarfed significantly by the amount of outstanding shares on public markets, for example, um, or the amount of transactions that happen uh, of shares or currencies on public markets. So yeah, I've given you a, a huge topic here yeah. now to explore. Uh, go ahead, Phil. And maybe I'll answer that by almost talking about like the chain analysis data pipeline, right? What does it take to do the type of work that we do? Great. So first of all, you've got to go and get the data from the blockchain, right? And there, which means you have to go run a node and plug into this peer-to-peer -peer network. And you can then download this history of transactions. Um, for some of the more recent blockchains, you have to run, run what's called a full node, where you are basically capturing like all the information rather than just some of the summary information. Um, like you have to keep the complete history of all the state changes. Um, so, and for some blockchains, that can be start to get quite large. Um, you know, you're talking about gigabytes and gigabytes of data, even getting into multiple terabytes now. Um, for some of like the largest blockchains, um, at least when you uncompress it, uh, because you don't just want to look at it in its raw blockchain form, you want right. to map that into some kind of more common concepts. So you talked about a transfer. But a transfer is not always a transfer. Uh, you know, it can be different on a different blockchain. So you've mm. got all of these blockchains. You want to map them into a common schema. You then want to pull them into an environment where you can analyze them. And then what Chain Analysis really specializes in is adding these maps. But these addresses are controlled by these entities. So we've got to constantly work out what that map is and then apply it. And then, you know, great, we've got a data schema, which is like this entity made these transfers to this other entity. But you can start adding more metadata on top of that. So we can start saying, well, what if actually there was a business that made a transfer to an entity we didn't know who made a transfer to an entity we didn't know? It's kind of important to know that that second hop entity, it was connected to that business. Mm -hmm. You can start adding more information in like, uh, you might have had a decentralized finance. There, what people are doing is they're not just transferring or holding an asset, they're swapping an asset or they're minting a non-fungible token. So now your world of transfers starts to get more verbose. There are more verbs. And mm. so, you know, your data types are now starting to kind of really explode. And then you've got to find out a way to efficiently you know, analyze this all and serve up answers in a product where people, you know, expect a real-time response. Mm. And so you're right that the scale of the challenge is very different from the entire economy, but you're also places you're getting your data sources are different. The places you've got to, you've then got to apply that map. And then you often have to run algorithms over the top of it to, you know, describe the data in, in a richer and richer way. And you know, sounds for, fascinating. Yeah, and for also an industry that's not been around that long, and there was you know limits to funding and limits to like no one else had ever done this, so you got to solve some problems for the first time as well. 